Hey, this is Andy Brown, and we're going to take a look at AWS Auto Scaling. This service has been around for a long time, but I've never tried to utilize it. And the idea is that it's, it looks for resources uh, that we have, and then it sees if it can it can add auto scaling to it. So we have a few options here. Um, so we can search by tag, create a CloudFormation stack, uh, or search by CloudFormation stack, or choose auto scaling groups. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what we would do with this one, but I think what we'll do to uh, make this work is we'll just create a new EC2 instance uh, using a CloudFormation template, and then we will run the service. It says it works with EC2, ECS, uh, DynamoDB, uh, Aurora, Amazon Aurora, and EC2 auto scaling groups. Um, so yeah, it says if you're already using EC2 auto scaling groups to dynamically scale your instances, you can now combine it with AWS auto scaling to scale automatic, automatic resources with other AWS services. So that's kind of cool, but let's go ahead and just do the basic example. I'm going to go over to GitHub and, um, we'll go ahead and launch our AWS examples. So we'll go and open this up here and I will make a, a new folder. I'm sure we have an EC2 CloudFormation template somewhere here, but we'll just make a new one to make a deploy script. Um, here, so we'll give it a moment to spin up. Okay. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll wait for terminal. I have so many folders here now, I have to make them via the terminal because I'll end up creating one inside of one by accident. So I can just type in mkdir and this one will be uh, AWS ASG. Okay. And I think in EC2, we might have a CloudFormation template which apparently we don't, all we have is user data. I'm sure we've made an EC2 instance before, um, but I guess if we don't have one, we can just make a new one. It's not that big of a deal. So I'll go ahead and type in template.yaml uh, and we'll just go look at EC2. We must have one. Let me just look for one, okay? Honestly, I don't know where one is. So I guess I'll just make a new one. So we'll go ahead and type in EC2 CloudFormation. And here we have uh, instances. So we'll go over to examples. And here is a simple example. So we'll go ahead and paste that in here. And then we'll just pare this down. So we'll just put in resources at the top, resources. We're going to need our version. Uh, well, version, hold on here. It was auto-completing for me just a moment ago. Nope, now it's not. <laughs> I didn't take a suggestion, now it's mad at me and it won't auto-complete for me but I'll just go ahead and grab this line here. We'll paste this one in. Um, and we do need an AMI image ID. So I'll go over to uh, EC2 here and we will go ahead and grab ourselves an instance, launch instance. And I just need anything. I'm in CA Central one, so we just got to keep track of where this is. So I'll go over here and I will paste in this here. And I'll just tell people CA central one image AMI. Okay, if you try to use it, that's your fault. Um, I don't need a key pair. Uh, I don't know if we really wanted to find all that stuff, but we'll go ahead and like the, the block storage there, but I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I definitely know I've done this somewhere. I guess we could just search for it in the app here. Uh, you know what, I'll just search for it. It takes two seconds. I'm being so lazy here today. And we'll say, search, search, search. Where are you, search? File, edit, view, search. How do you search for files? VS Code is not what I use on a day-to-day -day basis, even though I make tons and tons of videos in here. Find in files, there we go. And we'll hit enter. And so here we have some templates. So we have one here in serverless. Doesn't sound like something that would be serverless, but maybe we'd launch one up uh, uh, indirectly and that one for ALB. So I'll go into this one and um, yeah, that one's okay. I kind of want one that, this is installing Redis. I kind of want one that would install something like mm, Apache or something. No, not that one. How about this one? There we go. This is a good one. I knew I did this a bunch. It's just weird that I didn't do it in the cloud formation section or sorry, the EC2 section. So we'll go back here and I do want to keep that AMI. So I'm just going to go down here for a second. I'll paste this in here. And uh, I'm going to just reference the image ID instead. So let's just say parameters, uh, image ID. And, or sorry, that's the, uh, the, yeah, that's the parameter I want. And we'll say type here string. And then what I'll do is just grab this here and just call this default. And I'll just indicate that this is one for uh, CS Central AMI. 
And in here, we'll just go ref, and we will say image ID. There we go. And uh, actually, uh, again, I don't want this top block, so this one's already referenced here, so I'll just delete this one out here. And I'll just review this. It does want subnets, so that's a little bit annoying. So I'll go over here, and I will grab a subnet here and a VPC ID. I guess I'll just grab all of these. Okay. And I'll take the image ID. Still, I want to keep this one. And I'll just indicate that's the central one. And we're going to have to replace some of these values. So I'll get the VPC ID because I don't know if, if uh, where I launched this last one, so I don't trust it. I might have launched that in a custom VPC since we did a lot of that in the VPC section. And so we'll go over here and uh, yeah, I have this older one. I'm going to delete this. Can I get rid of that? I don't like when things are just hanging around. I didn't even know it made a VPC. Freaking co-pilot. Anyway, we'll go over here. We'll copy this VPC ID. We will paste this in here as such. Uh, we'll go down to subnets. And um, I kind of like not using uh, 1D. Oh, I hate this. <laughs> it was co-pilot. We do that in another video. Um, and it just makes junk everywhere, which I, I dislike. So I'll, again, just clean that up so I can see exactly what we have here. Excellent. Okay, so um, I just don't want 1D. I always have 1D feels like it's cursed, so I just want to stay away from that one. So this is 1B, which is totally fine. We'll go ahead and grab that one for CA Central. And we will paste that in here as such. And so now this is configured for, for mine. If you want to launch this other places, go ahead and do that. Uh, this is also wanting a security group, so I'll go ahead and grab that as well. So we'll go down below here and grab our security group, which is nice and simple. There we go. And so now we have uh, this. Um, it'd be nice to also have a deployment script. So this one was under VPC peering. I'm going to see if uh, this one actually has a deployment script because that will just save me some time. So we will go over to VPC peering if we can find it here. And yeah, we don't have one. And that's fine. I can just grab one from somewhere else. So where do I have another <laughs> deploy script? I have one somewhere here. Here's one, there we go, we'll copy this one and I'll go back over to AWS ASG and we'll make a new file here and call it deploy and we'll paste the contents in here. Unfortunately, uh, this is timing out so I gotta give this a refresh. It's an issue with Gitpod. So I'll just reload that. And we'll go back into here, we'll say new file, deploy and we'll paste this in here and we'll say deploy uh, EC2 so this will be um, AWS ACG EC2 basic. And so that will use that there. So we'll CD into that directory, chmod u plus x deploy. Um, I already have my AWS credentials set up. If you don't, you should go get them set up here. However you want to do that. We certainly have a video on there. I'm just doing get caller identity to Suhai M. I'm the AWS examples. I'm gonna go ahead and do the deploy. And so that's going to deploy this. Hopefully there is no problems with my CloudFormation script that I assembled very quickly. And as you can see, like CloudFormation is super easy to use. So there's really little reason to ever not use it because it's just no moving parts and just works uh, uh, pretty simply. But we'll go over to CloudFormation here and accept the template as I always like to uh, accept changes to the change sets here. We'll go ahead and execute that change set. Excellent. And so we'll wait for this to provision. Once this is provision, uh, we'll go back over to AWS Autoscaling and see what it can do. All right, so it says this EC2 instance is provisioned. That doesn't necessarily mean it's running because it's not doing those status checks, um, which we can update our CloudFormation template to do. I don't care about that here today. Uh, let's go over to Auto Scaling Groups for AWS. So this is AWS Auto Scaling. There we go. And from here, we're going to get started. We're going to choose by CloudFormation stack, and we'll choose this, and we'll see if it can recommend something. The, uh, no scalable resources found in the stack. What do you mean? There's an EC2 instance. I thought that's all it needed. Okay, so now what? Let me go read about it more, okay? All right, so basically it is suggesting that that's not what it does, okay? So it makes it sound like it can discover resources and uh, do something with them, but apparently 
That's not what it wants. It wants you to provide your auto scaling group and then it's going to make recommendations for optimization. So that really sucks. I don't like that. But let's go over to CloudFormation and tear that down. It's not a big deal. At least we have a template for later. And I'm gonna go back and make a note here and just say like um, readme.md. Just say AWS, AWS ASG does not uh, scale, does not automatically turn resources into scalable resources. It just discovers them. And by discovers, you mean you point them to it, which makes no sense. I'm going to save this anyway, because I still think this template is useful. CFN template is useless here. But we'll keep it around because we might have to come and use that for some, some other use case. So I think that that is still um, something I would like to use for something. It was ASG. And uh, so just not to waste our time, I'm going to delete this one, of course. And we'll just go over to ASG and make one by, by hand here because that's going to be a lot faster. That or what we can do, because we do have our auto scaling group section, we can go to that one and just launch that one up. So if we go back over to ASG here. We have a template. So why don't we just launch this one? Okay. Um, the question is, would this stuff still be rel relative? I don't know. So I'm going to go check and make sure that these are up to date. So I'm going to go over to CloudFormation. And, or not CloudFormation. Uh, we'll go over to VPC, sorry, VPC. And I just want to make sure that they're the right results. If the VPC ID matches, then I know that these are up to date. 08F0 or 0, 08F0. So yeah, these are all set up. This is ready to go. Uh, you, of course, have to change these values. But what I'm going to do is CD out of this and go over to ASG. And we'll go ahead and deploy this instead. Um, and we'll go to basic, sorry, and we'll just say deploy. That's a nice thing when you have a lot of code lying around, you're just going to save yourself some trouble. And so I'm hoping that this time we're going to get somewhere better. So go to cloud formation here and we will go ahead and click into this and go to change set and execute that change set. And then we'll wait for this to provision. Okay. All right. So our uh, container is, or sorry, our, uh, Auto scaling group is ready. Let's go over to EC2 ASG, or sorry, um, AWS ACG, and we'll see what it can actually tell us about our application. I don't like that I can't type that easily, so that's fine. We'll switch this over to here. And we'll go to get started, and we'll go to CloudFormation stack, and we'll choose our ASG basic, and we'll see if it can find the thing, which shouldn't be that hard to find out. So I'll just say my scaling plan here. And we'll scroll on down below. And we have some options here, optimize for availability, balance available cost, optimize for cost. So we'll go ahead and choose this one here. So keep the average CPU of your auto scaling group at 70% to ensure lower, or keep the average CPU utilization of your auto scaling group at 50% optimal available, reduced costs. So they have some options here. We have predictive scaling, dynamic scaling. If you are worried about costs, you do not have to spin this up. You can just watch me do this uh, again. But uh, here we can see what it's going to do. So it's basically creating um, CloudWatch uh, alarms for you is basically what it's doing. So go down below here, we will create our scaling plan and we'll wait for this to finish creating. I'm not sure how long this takes, but I guess we'll wait, okay. Oh, it created and we have a few problems. That's interesting. So let's see what it says. Scaling plan has been created, but failed due to uh, applied resources. Problems were encountered with one resource. See the scaling resources, plan resources for the failed details. Okay. Where do I go for that? Maybe into here? Mm hmm. So could it be that maybe we didn't wait for the instance to spin up? Let's go over to EC2 and see the state of the EC2, which is something we may have needed to wait for. Uh, so we'll go over there first. But what could be wrong that it does not like that? There is an instance. Okay, we go down to auto scaling group. It's here. One to one to five. Could it be a capacity issue? So let me uh, let me see, okay. Oh, you know what it is? Now carefully reading, it says a capacity forecast failed to be generated due to insufficient metric data. So basically what it's saying is that if we want to get that forecast data, we have to let this run for at least 24 hours um, to find out, uh, like our instance, right? And so um, what's really interesting about this is that there are some um, uh, auto scaling 
rules that are a pain to set up, like this forecast thing, uh, where you have to use like CLI commands to grab the forecast. And I could see this as a good uh, alternative if you want to get that without having to uh, do a lot of the work. So that's actually not that bad. I, I don't mind that. Uh, so all it did was create a target task scaling group, which is cool. Um, I think that this is sufficient. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. I'm not uh, any more interested in the scaling plan. I think it might be interesting to see if we could do uh, do more, but I'm gonna go ahead here and just choose this one again, because what I'm curious about is what do we have over here in custom? And so in custom, it looks like we can set target tracking and we can just choose these options. So this is just another UI um, that you can get, like in technically in auto scaling groups, you have a similar uh, user interface, but they just moved it over here. But it's really these things I think that is the benefit uh, that we have here for um, our auto scaling groups. But uh, yeah, this is just a convenience thing. But uh, anyway, what we'll do is we'll tear down our uh, CloudFormation stack and we'll just call this one done. But yeah, it's just an uh, over uh, UI. But there we go. Ciao.